But it just is what it is, you know. Um, my subject tonight is holiday lies exposed, and tonight we want to deal with everything. 
Go ahead, bro. And I know you like, I mean, some of y'all say, well, brother, you know, I, you know, when, when I hear you speak, you just put so much information in one lecture that, I mean, I can't even digest it all. You know, it's just too much information for one lecture. See, you know, I mean, I understand. But right now, we're in what they call an information age. Is that right? right? So for me to just give you one or two little things to take away from here, I mean, I don't think I'm doing you service because you can go and just pop stuff up instantaneously. So, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to put as much information as I can in one hour. But I have to comment on the controversy with this actor by the name of Michael Richards. Go ahead, go ahead. was in the uh, Lab Factory last uh, Friday, right? And there were these two brothers in the Lab Factory with him. Yeah. And they heckled him or said, you know, your jokes aren't funny, right? And so this man starts to call them out of their name. And his first comment that we heard was, 50 years ago, we would have you hanging upside down right. from a tree go ahead, go ahead. with a fork stuck up your backside. That's right. Then he, after that, go ahead. He repeatedly called them nigga right. seven or eight times, right? Yes, sir. And it got real heated. Now, I, I agree with Jamie Foxx. I mean, I agree with Jamie Foxx. I don't know what kind of black people these were, right? <laughs> Jamie Foxx said if it was him and his friends, they would still be taken right now. <laughs> so, you know, these must have been some special kind of black people. Because yeah, yeah. the average brother would lay hands on him. Woo! And I'm not talking what they do in church. So these had to be some God sent black people. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So they leave the club, they exchange words. But what does it show, brothers and sisters? It shows a lot of different things. It shows what's really in his heart, right? Right. But it also shows you have um these organizations like the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League. Right. And if the Honorable Louis Farrakhan says, you know, I was walking down the street and I met a Jewish man. I shook his hand. I told him, have a nice day. Abraham Foxman comes on the news and calls the Honorable Louis Farrakhan an anti-Semite. He takes out a full-page ad in the New York Times and he says, the nerve of Louis Farrakhan going to shake hands with the Jewish man. Now, I'm exaggerating, but my point is that anytime the Honorable Louis Farrakhan mentions the word Jewish or Jew, then there's a press conference, right? right. And the Jewish leaders try out all the Negroes, right? And use the Negroes, or try to use them to condemn the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Right? Yes, sir. But now my question is, where is Abraham Foxman now? Where's the press conference? Where's the trotting out of other rights and Jews, right? To condemn a man who we don't have to mix his words up, right? Like they do the words and I'm a Louis Farrakhan. We don't have to reinterpret his words and get part of the speech over here and something over there. It just straight up is what it is. But there's no outcry coming from who? Abraham Fox from the ABL and the JPL. So not only does it manifest what's in the heart of this particular comedian, but it also manifests the hypocrisy of the ABL. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. So now, but you know, Ice Cube said, here's what they think about you. Have y'all ever heard that? I mean, you know, as black people, we gotta wake up. You understand? So, brothers and sisters, let's deal with holiday lives exposed. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that he came to end spook civilization. That's a quote. So now, if you look at black people, we're very spooky. I mean, we believe in a lot of lies. And we're gonna some of you take them to our grave. Uh, I think it was Stevie Wonder said. They were very superstitious. Is that right? Yeah. Some of y'all think, well, if I step on a crack, I'm going to break my mama's back. Is that right? Okay. Some of y'all believe that right now, you walk down the sidewalk, and you right now are afraid to split a pole. <laughs> You'll get a block down the street, go all the way back around the pole. Because you don't want to split a pole. Some of you still believe that a black cat is bad luck. Right? 
or that if you walk under a ladder or you break a mirror, right, that this is bad luck, right? Some of y'all think, well, I'm a Libra and I'm this way because I'm a Libra. Or I'm a Sagittarius, or I'm a Capricorn, or I'm a Virgo, or a Gemini, and I, hey, I just am the way I am because of my zodiac sign. Right? That's what some of y'all believe. Some of you, in a few short days, on New Year's, you're going to have greens and black eyed peas because you think the black eyed peas will bring you luck, but you're still in the ghetto. You're still poor and poor. And you think the greens is going to bring you money. And you do this every year and still in the same condition. That's out of the same. Now, so, <laughs> you know, we want to talk about the origin of these things. We want to talk about the origin of Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow. Some of you right now have a turkey at home, right? I was on, on my way to work this morning. And I heard a brother, young brother on the radio, so my his mama was already cooking chitlins, and they were stacking up the house. And this is what he said, they're stacking up the whole house. But we're going to be eating them with hot sauce tomorrow. And I mean, I don't understand when we as a people are going to put two and two together. Now the chitlin, I'm going to use some language that some of you may be offended by, but I'm going to use it anyway. Because this is a language that the average black person Understand. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. That's right. Now, chitlins hold the doo doo of a pig. I could have said bowel movement, but it doesn't have, it doesn't bring the image in your mind. I could have said BM. I could have said excrement, but I'm going to use the word doo doo. The chitlins hold the doo doo of a pig. Go ahead. The pig is an animal that feeds off of other animals' doo doo. It eats its own doo doo. Chickens, cows, whatever, right? But see, most of us don't know because the pig raisers hide this from us, right? Because they know if we saw the pig eating doo-doo, we wouldn't eat the pig, right? See, black people don't eat rats because they know rats eat doo-doo. It just came out on the news that there's a half a million rats in Chicago, and no matter how they close the trash cans or whatever they do, it doesn't matter because they survive off dog doo-doo. So you would never find a black person eating a rat because they know that that's a nasty animal. Well, the pig is nastier than the rat, so why would you eat that? Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Now, so the, the pig raisers feed the pigs anything. Now, the intestines, which holds the doo of the pig, right? Now, I'm from the South, so I've seen people clean chickens before. They hold the chitlin in one hand, or one hand in one hand, put water in the other hand, shake it up and down, <laughs> let this hand go, and the doo-doo falls out. That's right, right. Now, that which they just saw, doo-doo in, they take it in the house, put it in a pot, and cook it, it makes the whole house smell like doo-doo. Yes, yeah. Then, they get hot sauce, and put the hot on something that the average pig lives 20 to 27 years. So these intestines had doo-doo in them for 20 to 27 years. Now they're eating something that had doo-doo in it for 20 to 27 years, and they will tell you it tastes good. That's but right. me, I'm saying, I'm just saying, well, that's what I mean, I don't care, that's me. But all you know, it's great, it's great. Right? Now, if I brought you to my house, and I brought out a piece of china, fine china, and I was going to put your food on this plate. But before I put your food on the plate, I took your plate and your cup in the bathroom and doo on the plate and in the cup. And then brought it to you and showed it to you. Then took it to the sink and washed it off with soap and everything. Would you eat off the plate? Hell no. Because you saw doo on the plate. And you don't care how many times I washed the plate, it was doo on the plate. That's right. So why would you eat something if the doo was on the plate five minutes, ten minutes, and I washed it off with soap? Why would you eat something that had doo in it for 20 to 27 years? Ooh, hey, oh, hey. Now you say, well, it tastes good, it tastes good. See, there's a book called Fast Food Nation, right? right. Mm -hmm. And in this book, the author, and the movie is coming out real soon. Sorry. 
It's already out. Yes, now, in the book, the author describes how these perfume companies have all these factories in New Jersey, and they meant because most of your taste is based on your smell because you only have a certain number of taste buds. Right. And it's not that many, right? right? One side of one part of your tongue tastes sweet, one part tastes sour, right? right. So you don't have that many taste buds. So the majority of your taste is manufactured by what you smell. You follow what I'm saying? You have millions of nerves in your nose that detect all different kinds of smells. So they figured out that if they can make it smell good, then they can make it taste good. So this man said he was in this perfume company. And they put these, they blindfolded him and put these white sticks in these different jars and it smelled like anything. And then, I mean, whatever, strawberries, oranges, and all it was was chemical, right? Then he said he could just imagine because of the smell that somebody had pulled out a grill and started grilling hamburgers in the very room that he was in. When he took the uh, blindfold off, the man had a white stick in front of his nose. <laughs> but all of this was caused by what he smelled. So see, the enemy knows when they process this food, Boy. it looks terrible. Boy. But they add coloring, right? Yeah. And artificial flavors, right? To give it a smell and a look that makes it appear to be good. So what do you hear all the time? It tastes good. It tastes good. Yeah, they made it taste good. You can die right now, we can season you, and you'll taste good. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But none of y'all want to eat people just because they can be made to taste good. Okay, now I'm sorry. I just, you all, you know, Muslims always got to do the public service announcement about the pig. I'm so sorry. Now let's move on. So we're going to deal with the origin of Thanksgiving. We're going to deal with um, what happened to the Native Americans after Thanksgiving. We'll deal with who is Bloody Mary. Because some of y'all believe if you go in the bathroom right now and say Bloody Mary three times, somebody's going to come out the mirror and get you. You're going to take that to your grave, some of y'all. Go ahead, go ahead. What is he talking about? You may not have, I'm sorry. You never heard that. You hear it tonight. Now, we'll deal with Halloween. And we'll deal with the power of the truth and the power of a lie. Now, there's a lot to deal with in the next 43 minutes, but we're going to try to do it. Now, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that one day, and I'm going to go far as I said it as well, truth and falsehood went swimming. That's right. right? And falsehood got out of the pool before truth and put on truth's clothes, right? And took off running. And he said, from that day to this day, naked truth has been chasing a well-dressed life. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to bring some naked truth to chase a well-dressed life. Are y'all ready? Go ahead. So now the first thing we want to know is that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the story that you read about in the Bible of Adam and Eve, right? Now we know, or we should know, that Adam and Eve were not the first people on earth. All you have to do is go to the encyclopedia, or since it's 2006, you can just Google it. And you type in pre-Adamites, right? And the pre-Adamites are the people that live on earth before Adam. And the archaeologists and anthropologists call them the pre-Adamites. That's you and I. The story of Adam and Eve in the Bible, if you get a study Bible, it says it was written in 4004 B.C. Well, if it's 4004 B.C., this is 2006, right? That's 6,010 years ago. Have black people been on Earth longer than 6,010 years? Yeah. Well, all you have to do is look at science. Because the Leakies found uh, bones in Africa that were 1,750,000 years old. They named them Zen's Anthropus, which means black man. Because they were the bones of a black man. Are y'all with me? Then, the son, Richard Leakey, went back and found a human skull that was 1,800,000 years old. Right. And then another man went to another part of Africa. Uh, his name is Donald Johansson. And he found the, the bones that are called the Lucy bones. Right. Right. And they're three and a half million years old, the bones of a black woman. And just recently, about a month ago, I can't remember the man's name, but he found bones that were older than the Lucy bones. Are y'all with me? All in Africa, and now the scientists today have to bear witness to what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said in 1930. 
That the black man and woman are the original people. They ain't proven that. Y'all with me? So what's my point? My point is that there were people here before Adam and Eve. The story of Adam and Eve is symbolic, right? right. It's historical, right? right? And it's also spiritual. So what we're dealing with tonight is the symbolic part of the story of Adam and Eve, all right? So now you have Adam and Eve in the garden, right? Now you know and Adam and Eve were not black. This is where in the historical aspect. It's talking about the first group of white people on the planet. Adam and Eve represent a new people. Right. Not the first people, the first of a kind of people. Right. Y'all got that? That's the historical side. But I'm going to deal with the symbolic side because it has to do with truth and falsehood. So now, in this story, you have a snake that approaches Eve, right? Ooh. And tells her to eat from a tree that has the knowledge of good and evil. Now, you know that snakes never had legs. So y'all think, well, she had snakes and legs until God cursed them, see, and said, you're going to be on your belly forever. And it was a time that women had children and it wasn't no pain. Mm -hmm. well, that's not what the Bible means. Snakes never had legs. Snakes can never talk. See, you've been watching too much. Is that Dr. Doolittle? Is that what it is? No, snakes never talk. It's symbolic of a person that encourages you. See, people have characteristics like animals, right? And a person... That is um, a person that's scheming. You call him a snake, right? Yeah. Like sisters, you call brothers. He's a no good dog, right? <laughs> because of the way he acts. And y'all call her a female dog, which is not good. But what am I trying to show? That we give people the characteristics of animals. Y'all with me? Right. So now there is no tree that has the knowledge of good and evil. Right. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan said that the tree represents a person that has the knowledge of good and uses the knowledge of good to attract the good. People and then uses the knowledge of evil to deceive the good into the doing of evil. Go ahead. And that's exactly what the white man has done. Use the knowledge of good to attract us, and then use the knowledge of evil to get us whose nature is good to participate in evil. Y'all with me? Yes. So now, so he gives uh, when when we deal with it, he always gives truth mixed with falsehood because falsehood has no power. But when you mix it with truth. Then the truth with the falsehood gives the falsehood power. Y'all with me? That's right. So now let's move on. Let's first deal with those of you who think you're Capricorns, Sagittarius, <laughs> Libras. Oh, I don't know them all, but you know what you are, right? You said, well, I was born on April 11th, I'm a whatever, whatever, right? And some of y'all wake up every morning and open up the paper, right? And you look in the paper saying, well, CC Omar said, that I'm going to be this today, or this is going to happen to me today. Now, come on, simple mathematics. There's 12 zodiac signs, right? right? And there's 6 billion people on the planet Earth today, right? right? So that means, if we just do the numbers, that for every zodiac sign, there are 500 million people under each sign. Are y'all listening? So now, what are the odds of all 500 million people that are Sagittarius for the same thing to happen to them on that particular day. What are the odds? Now, you read the little uh, horoscope, it says you'll probably find love waiting around the corner. Go ahead. And what if I'm in jail when I'm a Sagittarius? When I'm in jail. Do I want to find love waiting around the corner? <laughs> Billions of miles away 
are affecting your life on earth. Mm. Some of those stars have burnt out and are no longer there. And you said, girl, just leave it to the stars. Just leave it to the stars. Star ain't even there. Are y'all with me? So now, what does the Bible say? What does the Holy Quran say? Mm. If you read in the Holy Quran, there's a, uh, in the, I believe it's the fifth surah, I have it right here. And I'm not going to read it verbatim, but I'm just going to let you know where it is. It's surah 6, 75 through 82. And in Surah 6, 75 through 82, you have the story of Abraham, right? And Abraham looks at his father, he sees him worshiping idols, and he says, I know that's not right. So he leaves his father, and he sees the stars, right? And he says, is this what I should worship? But then the stars set, right? So he said, I can't worship the setting ones. So then the moon comes up, and he says, is this what I should worship? But then the moon set, right? Then the sun comes up. And he says, oh man, this is magnificent. Is this what I should worship? And what happened? The sun set. So then he says, well, I should worship the one and true God, Allah, right? Because those things come and those things go, but Allah is always here. So how can you be a Muslim and Abraham is the father of the righteous and didn't worship stars, and now you're a Muslim or a Christian, right? And you worship the stars. I mean, come on. Hmm. And you can't be both. I'm sorry. You just can't do it. Sidney Omar is not God. Uh, Dear Abby is not God. I'm sorry. Okay, let's move on. Now, in the Bible, I'm just going to give you the Bible verse. In the Bible, it calls the people who did horoscopes observers of time, right? Because the prefix aura, right, it comes from the word hour, right, which represents time, and scope means to look or to observe, right? So horoscope is one who observes time. So in the Bible, it doesn't use the word horoscope. It uses the word observers of time, which is the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? And the book of Leviticus 19 and 26, it tells the church of Israel not to follow people who observe time and who believe in horoscopes. Are y'all with me? Okay, let's move on. Mm. Now, Jesus in the Bible says, that ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Right? And if any, but see, what he doesn't say is what truth is going to make us free, right? Right, right? He just says the truth, but he doesn't qualify the truth. Because all of us know something that's true, but there has to be a special truth from a special man that would make us free from the falsehood. Y'all with me? Right. See, the only way that you can determine between truth and falsehood is if you know the complete truth. Right. If you're unaware, then the part that you're unaware about, you can be deceived. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Right. So the only way you cannot be deceived is you know the complete truth. And as black people, we never got that. So a man has to be given to us to bring us the what? The 100% truth. Right. Now, let's look at Halloween. Okay, we got it. I'm going to try to do this, okay, as much as I can. Halloween was just passed, right, October 31st. Now, we know that Halloween is the festival of the dead, right? right. And, see, the, these holidays, they have no root where we come from, right. in Africa, in Asia. Right. All of these holidays that we celebrate, their root is in Europe. And it comes from Europe at a time where the Europeans had no knowledge. Wow. See, the Europeans were in the dark ages, and when they got ready to like explore the world, not when they got ready, but we actually went there and civilized them and shared with them the knowledge that we had. And they gave them the ability to explore the world. Y'all with me? Wow. And they came among us. Before that, they believed in spirits and demons and ghosts and goblins. They had no scientific reason for things that took place, right? right. So if you were sick, they would just put leeches on your body. And the leeches would suck your blood, and they thought that the leeches would suck the sickness out of you. Because they didn't have any scientists. They learned that from us, so y'all with me. So now, so this festival was during that time. So when we follow these holidays, it has nothing to do with black people. The only reason we celebrate them is because we were brought in slavery. And whatever the slave master celebrated, what? We had to, we were forced to celebrate those same holidays. I personally believe. That if there was a Ku Klux Klan holiday tomorrow, and black people got the day off, and we could barbecue, 
Wooden girl, what you gonna do for Cuckoo Clutch Clan today? I'm coming over and gonna have some, um, some, some, some ribs on the grill. Yeah, man, I just love the Cuckoo Clutch Clan. That's how I'm just telling you. Because we just want a day off work, is that right? <laughs> Unemployed and want a day off work. It's, I don't understand. So now, the Celts and the Anglo Saxons, right, who are white from Europe, their year, their new year began on November 1st, which was the end of summer, right? And they thought that the sun was dying. So they would set these huge fires in Europe, bonfires, right? And they thought that by setting these fires, they could bring the sun back to life. Are y'all with me? Well, we know that that's crazy. Now, so they had a festival of the dead because in the winter, the earth dies, right? right. So Halloween was a Celtic and Anglo-Saxon festival of the dead. The Druids, had, they celebrated or worshiped the god of death. And on October 31st, this god of death gathered all the evil spirits together, right? And they would be reincarnated as animals. So this is, during this time, what the Europeans would do, they would take dead animals and wear them on their head, right? And they thought that by wearing the dead ox or the dead cow or the dead pig or whatever, wear these dead animals on their head that they would scare away the evil spirits, right? And they would go throughout the countryside, the poor people, the homeless, would go throughout the countryside and beg, right? So some people would beg um, food for the homeless, right? And it would be good food. Others would beg food for the homeless and they would put dead rats on the inside, blood on the inside, something to poison the food on the inside, right? And they would give it to them. So this is where the trick or treat came from. Some people would give you good food, and some people would give you something that was poisonous. And they would give that food to the homeless people that were begging in Europe. Are y'all with me? So now, what happened? In 43 AD, the Romans conquered the Celts, right? And they merged two of their guys together. The Celtic god was Ferulia. The Roman god was Pomona. Are y'all with me? So they, they merged their celebration. Pomona was the goddess of fruit in ancient Rome. She wore a crown of apples on her head. So now, every Halloween, they have a thing where you bob for apples, right? And you stick your head in a barrel with five other people, snot and slob coming all out your mouth, right? And they put a couple of apples in there, and you stick your head in the water, and you try to catch the apple in your mouth with everybody's slob and spit, right? In there with you. Now, I, I bought for apples before, I'm not going to lie. You know, before I became a Muslim, at the boys club, yeah, I did do that. But see, we do these things and have no idea where they come from. Are y'all with me? Yes. So now, when Christianity took over Rome, the Pope compromised with the pagans because he wanted the pagans to become a part of Christianity. Y'all with me? So he decided to make November 1st All Souls Day and the day before November 1st, which was October 31st, would be All Hallows Eve, or the contraction is Halloween. Y'all understand? Yeah, he yeah. didn't change the practice, he just incorporated the practice into Christianity. Which is, you know, what Caucasians have done. They take the name of God, right? And they use his name to shield whatever evil they want to do. Are y'all with me? Don't get too mad because we do the same thing, right? I mean, we do. You know, they say, well, you know, if God didn't want people to be gay, why would he make them? Why would he make me like that? <laughs> and you watch a TV, it kind of makes sense, right? And you hear the brothers, well, see, 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 what happened was, well, see, if God didn't want a brother smoking weed, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, God, why is the weed on earth? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what he put it here for? <laughs> right? I mean, but we don't use that logic with other things, do we? This dog doing the part thing, hey, well, you know, it's here, it's on earth. Maybe I should eat this, or maybe I should smoke it. We don't use that same measure, right? Now, we said, well, see, God didn't want us to, you know, have all these women, you know, then why is there so many of them? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you must be with the people. Right? So don't get too mad at white people, because they trained us very well to do the same exact thing, right? Never follow God, and then when something bad happens in our life, we blame God. Right? We're just smoking crack. Grandmama died, now we blame God. You understand? Just shut up the block. Cousin got shot last week, 
Now we mad at God at the funeral. Why would God let this happen? But what happened when you shot the little four year old boy drinking Kool Aid? Right. You understand? God catches a lot of flags. So now, that's Halloween. It's a celebration of the dead. It has nothing to do with Jesus, nothing to do with God. So after Halloween, you have this holiday called Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow, right? Some of y'all have turkeys at home right now, in the oven, with stove top stuff, right? It makes no sense. Now, where did this holiday Thanksgiving come from? Some of you will say, well, see, brother, you know, see, that's what I understand about y'all moves, man. You see, you see, you gotta thank God, man. It's all about thanking God. That's what it's about. No, it's not. It's about sweet potato pie. That's what it's about. It's about eating, laying down on the table, catching the highest, right? Waking back up, eating again, right? Going to sleep, waking back. It's not about thanking God. Let's just keep everything real. Now, but let's deal with the origin of what we call Thanksgiving. Have you ever wondered why Native Americans don't celebrate Thanksgiving? I mean, there's only a couple of them left after the white man murdered them. That's right. But you don't see them celebrating Thanksgiving, right? And most of y'all claim you got Indians somewhere in your family, right? Well, she's my cousin Indian. Go ahead. My grandma, I'm part, I'm part Cherokee. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, I'm, me, I'm, I'm 160 Chippewa. You know what I'm saying? Well, my uncle, he a full blooded Choctaw. Go ahead, go ahead. You want to be anything other than black. Is that right? <laughs> now, but the Native Americans do not celebrate Thanksgiving, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, Thanksgiving, they say, started, the pilgrims came in December of 1620. They landed here, right? <laughs> and half of them died. So by 1621, there was only like 50 of them left, right? So they bring in, in you know, up until 1621, they, the Native Americans came and they taught them how to grow food, how to plant crops, right? And the, the pilgrims learned from the Native Americans, right? And they were able to survive in what they called the New World. Uh -huh. Y'all with me? Yeah, yeah. So in 1621, they had a dinner and they invited all the Native Americans and it was a big feast, lasted for three days, right? That was the first Thanksgiving. It sounds so wonderful, doesn't it? Right. See, that's how the enemy operates. Yeah. He makes it sound so good. You know, you turn on the television and he says, I hear you. You want to start? Juicy, tender, pork, the other white meat. He just makes it sound so good. Right? He doesn't say how the pig lives, right? He just gives you something that creates an image in your mind, and he calls it the other white meat, right? So now, that's the practice. They make it sound good, but then when you get to the truth of it, it's no good. So let's deal with the truth. See, the first thing we need to know is when the not that when the uh, pilgrims came and they landed in Plymouth in that area there were no Native Americans there because the pilgrims that came in 1614 had so many diseases that the Native Americans that lived in Plymouth before they came died from the diseases of the white man now have you ever heard of something called the Columbian Exchange if not Google it Columbian Exchange the Colombian exchange is the exchange of uh, foods from Europe, Africa to America and from America to Europe and Africa, right? So now, the thing that the Europeans brought, because all they had in Europe was potatoes, the thing that they brought to the Colombian exchange was diseases. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad says how to live that all diseases from social disease to cancer came from Europe. Wow. And I don't have time to go into the history of why these diseases came to Europe, but in 1614, when the first group of pilgrims came, the Native Americans that lived along the coast had been killed by their diseases. So when the other pilgrims came in 1620, they came to an area that was not even populated, right? So that when the, when the Native Americans that lived in the outskirts found out they were there, they helped them. Are y'all with me? So now let's do the timeline. Now, in 1621, they had the first Thanksgiving. In 1629, 
that English, or the whites that came from England, started to steal land from the Native Americans. See, they had, this is only eight years later, they had what's called English common law. Right. And under English common law, if the land is not cultivated, or being cultivated, you can claim it for the king. So they saw land that belonged to the Native Americans that was not cultivated, they claimed it for the king, but of course, the Native Americans were offended, right? right. Europe, they kept sending boatloads of white people over here, or settlers or pilgrims, or whatever you want to call them. So then in 1636, this is 25 years later, a man by the name of Captain John Mason slaughters 700 Native Americans at Mystic River. Did y'all see that movie, Mystic River? Yeah, but they didn't tell you what happened at Mystic River. So now, Captain John Mason slaughters 700 Native Americans at Mystic River. That's 1636, 25 years later, after they arrived. Is that right? See, they're not going to say this tomorrow during the Thanksgiving Day Parade, right? It's not going to be brought up. So then in 1641, the governor of Manhattan issues what they call a scout bounty. Y'all know what a scout bounty is? For every scout of a Native American that you bring in, you get 20 shillings. This was a law in Manhattan, right? So now, but if you capture the Native American to be sold into slavery, then they gave you 40 shillings. That's 1641. So then, the Native Americans, you know, after all of this, they start to fight back. The first chief of the Native Americans, I need to say, I want to try to pronounce his name correctly. Massasoit. Massasoit was the chief of the Native Americans that met the pilgrims when they came, right? So now, he dies, and his son becomes the chief of the, of the Native Americans. While Massasoit was chief, there was a peace treaty between the whites and the Native Americans, even though they violated the peace treaty. So when Massasoit dies, and Meta Common becomes the chief, the whites called him King Philip, then he starts to fight the Native Americans, not the Native Americans, but starts to fight the whites because of what they had done and how they were still a land from the Native Americans, right? So then a man by the name of Captain Benjamin Church <laughs> assassinated Metacomet, right, who was the chief of the Native Americans, quartered his body, which means cut it in fours, fed his body to the wolves, took his head off, right, sent his head to Plymouth, which is where the first group of uh, whites came, right, in 1620. They stuck it on a pole, right, on Thanksgiving. Right. right. In Plymouth, right? And then they cut it, they sent his hands that they cut off, sent those to Boston, and then they were going to kill his nine year old son, but they just sold him into slavery. Mm -hmm. So now, this is what we're celebrating when we celebrate this holiday that we call Thanksgiving. This is why when you go among the Native Americans, they're not celebrating Thanksgiving. That's right. You understand? Because. They're not thankful for being slaughtered by white people. Now, after this group of whites slaughtered the Native Americans, then you have a man by the name of General Amherst. Y'all heard of General Amherst before? Yeah. You know what? I had a letter. I think I said over here, but right here. A letter written by General Amherst. General Amherst is the general. This is in 1763, where he decides to give the Native Americans blankets that were laced with smallpox. Right. There's a college named after General Amherst right now, and a high school. Mm. See, what, you have, what we have to understand is that no matter how much evil whites pour out on us, they're going to honor and respect and love their leaders. You understand what I'm saying? But see, they can always get us to condemn our leaders because of what our leaders may have done to offend them. Y'all with me? Yes, I'll give you this example and I'm going to move on. Y'all heard of Fred Hampton, right? right. So in Chicago, they wanted to name a street after Fred Hampton. And the police chief gets upset, right? Because he claims that Fred Hampton was responsible in the killing of two police officers. Right. But now, if you go downtown, they have streets named after all kind of white people yes. that murdered and enslaved, lynched and robbed black people and the Native Americans. 
right. And they don't protest about a street being named after Andrew Jackson, right? right. There's a Jackson. This man is the one that issued the Indian Removal Act to get rid of the Native Americans that were in Georgia, right? right. This man was a slave owner. They don't have a problem with a street being named after Roosevelt. They don't have a problem with Columbus Drive. Right? And Columbus took 600 Native Americans in slavery. Go right? Ahead, go ahead. They don't have a problem. What's all the streets that's Washington. named after president? Washington, Washington, who sold a black man into slavery for a keg of rum and molasses. Right. Go ahead. Jefferson, who beat and added slaves with And, I'm not going to say raped Sally Hemings, but raped Sally Hemings. <laughs> right? Who have murdered us? So what's the debate for? Right. If you have a brother who was good for us, and maybe he dropped his gun on accident, and two police officers got shot. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm so sorry. Now, some of y'all don't be embarrassed. Now, so this man, General Amherst, he laces these blankets with smallpox. And then sends the blankets as a gift to the Native Americans. And the letter, which is dated, I'm going to read to you from the letter, all right? Dated, um, see, first is his colonel, Henry Bouquet, sent a letter to General Amherst dated July 16, 1763, where he asked permission to lace these blankets with smallpox. General Amherst turns around three days later, in July 16, 1763, and says he approves the plan in a postscript, which means a letter, and suggests that they can do every, not only do that, but every other method that we can use to extirpate this excoriable race. Talking about the Native Americans. So not only did they send them blankets laced with smallpox, which is genocide, right? Yes. Then they did everything within their power to slaughter the Native Americans. You shouldn't be too shocked by that. Because there's crack in the black community right now. Right. It's the same thing, right? That's chemical warfare. You heard of the Tuskegee experiment, right? right? That's chemical warfare. So I mean, it's not beyond white people to kill a whole bunch of innocent people. I mean, you know, I just got that white girl. Oh, that's true. Now, so the origin of Thanksgiving is wrapped up in the slaughter and murder of Native Americans. But see, as black people, when we escape from slavery, it was the Native Americans that took us in. Right. Right. Yes, sir. And so you may actually have some Native American blood in you somewhere. Yes, sir. Because the Native Americans had sympathy yeah. on the black people, yeah. and when we escaped, then they took us in, and the whites wanted them to give us back, and they wouldn't. So we should have a problem when we read the lessons, and it says the 17 million with the 2 million Indians, because why should they be with us? Now, so let's move on. That is um, thanks. I'm trying to. I don't want to hold y'all here too long. That's right. I hope I'm not going to take time. Okay. So we dealt with Columbia. Okay. Let me just say this, just to give you the diseases that the, that the whites brought over here when they came during the Columbia exchange: smallpox, syphilis, gonorrhea, right. whooping cough, influenza, or the flu. And a host of other diseases are the diseases that they brought when they came. Right. So when they came among the Native Americans, a white man would call. <coughs> Thousands of Native Americans would die. So they wanted to enslave the Native Americans. But the Native Americans died from the diseases of the white people. So they couldn't enslave them. So that's why they had to go to Africa and get us. Because we couldn't withstand the diseases of the white man. Are y'all ready? Yes. I don't have time to go into why they had all these diseases. Let's move quickly. I got to deal with um, Valentine's Day. Go ahead, go ahead. Because some of y'all are lonely and you want somebody to be your Valentine. But you don't know what you're talking about. Now, so the origin is going to be quick. The origin of Valentine's Day is this. That the Romans had a guy called... Luper, Lupercalia, I believe that's how you pronounce it. That's how you pronounce it? Yes, okay. And this was, it, I mean, it didn't say when I was researching, it was the God of love, that was the Roman God. And this holiday was celebrated every February 15th. Right. 
right. among the Romans, right? So what the Romans would do, if you know anything about ancient Rome, you know they believed in having very freakish behavior. Right. And, you know, it is, you know, it is now as it was then. The whites, they're no different. If you study the lives of these kings, and not kings of Rome, but these presidents, they're no different than the Roman emperors of the past. See, they just hide it from you, so you don't know how wicked they are. Right. The, the lessons ask the question, um, and I don't want to get it wrong. I keep Why does the, the white man apart. keep you apart from his social That's equality? Right. So you won't know how wicked he is yeah. in all his affairs. Right. But I want you to get a book called Inside the White House, yeah. written by a white man, <laughs> about the white men that live in the White House. Great. And in the book, he talks about how wicked they are and all of their affairs. He talks about how Nixon rearranged that plane on Air Force One because it was like they have an oval office on the plane or meeting room. Then it's the first lady's bedroom. Then it's Nixon's bedroom. But Nixon, all of his women that he would mess around with, they would have to walk through his wife's bedroom in order to get to his room. So he put his wife's room on the opposite side of the office so they could come straight to his room because she was offended that you're actually walking them through my room so you can have sex with them. Right? I mean, this is how they live. You know, in the book talks about how in the war room of the White House, these white people would have origins. In the war room of the White House. I know that's hard to believe. Because you think they're so holier than that. Right. Do you think the governor of New Jersey is the first politician to have an affair with another man? No. Most of these politicians live a double life. They come out and condemn homosexuality, but they're homosexuals in the closet. You heard about the preacher? Hacker? Right? And he's paying a young man for ecstasy pills and a massage, but he never said what the man was massaging. He never said that. He just said it was a massage. Right? So they give you the appearance that they're righteous. But they're filthy in all their things. Are y'all with me? So now, in the book he talks about Lyndon Johnson, who said the only reason he passed the Voting Rights Act was so he could have those niggas voting Democratic for 300 years. That's a direct quote from Lyndon Baines Johnson. The reason that he passed the Voting Rights Act was so he could have those niggers voting Democratic for the next 300 years. Now, tell this is real, I know this is shocking. So this man, everywhere he went in D.C., wherever he saw a pretty secretary, he forced them to fire them, her so he could hire her, so he could sleep with her. And it talked about how you know women would come in to take dictation, and they would run out naked. Because I don't know what went on. I know they ran out. But this is how the rulers are living. That's how they lived in Rome. Okay? So now, they had a lover's lottery during Valentine's Day. Or during Lupra Khalid. And you would pick a name. And the person who you picked, that would be your lover. You understand? Male, female, it didn't matter. Not in Rome. Right? So then, um, Pope, uh, one of the popes, replaced the festival with a saint by the name of St. Valentine because they wanted to bring in the pagans into Christianity. So St. Valentine was a saint, and there's like three different St. Valentines. But they say, well, this holiday is about this particular. St. Valentine was a saint in ancient Rome during a time where Claudius II banned marriages because he felt that married men did not make good soldiers because they wanted to be at home with their wives. They didn't want to fight. So the man outlaws marriage, right? right? So then Claudius, not Claudius, pardon me, Valentine, the saint, he performs these marriages illegally. Mm -hmm. So when the emperor finds out, then he executes him, right? right? And he executes him on February 14th. Now some people say that when he executed him, he cut his heart out of his chest and ate it. So every year on February 14th, what do you do? You buy a heart. You send it to somebody. And what do they do? They eat it. 
And then it goes. We don't know what we celebrate. Whatever the white man says celebrate, we celebrate. Okay, right? So now I gotta move quick. Because I gotta wrap it up and tell you why all these holidays. Now, let's deal really quickly with Bloody Mary. It was really a woman named Bloody Mary. In his if you ever heard of Henry the Eighth, Henry the Eighth was the king of England. And he was married to Catherine, the daughter of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand that sent Columbus on the voyage. Y'all with me? So Catherine is the daughter of Isabella and Ferdinand that drove the Moors out of Spain, us, black folks. After they got the knowledge from us, then they drove the Moors out, right? So now, Henry marries Catherine, and they have a daughter named Mary, right? He wants a son to replace him as the king. So, Mary, not Mary, pardon me, Catherine cannot give him a son. So Henry is like, man, I can't stay with you. I need a son to rule because I don't believe a woman can rule, right? So he then, you know, even at that time in the Catholic Church, divorce was illegal, right? So he couldn't divorce her because she's the daughter of Isabella and Ferdinand, right? And some kind of way they're related to the Pope, some kind of way, right? So to divorce her would disrespect not only the king and queen of Spain, but also the Pope, right? So, but Henry wants a son. So here's what he does. He says, well, the hell with the Catholic Church. I'm going to start my own church called the Church of England. And I'm going to put my own man in power so he can grant my divorce, right? It's not called the Church of England in the United States. It's called the Anglican Church. But the Anglican Church and the Church of England is the same thing. Because you can't, like, British Petroleum. In here, in Britain, it's called British Petroleum. Here, they call it BP. You understand? Because they think that Americans will be finished. British Petroleum, they're not British, they just call it BP. So they call it the Anglican Church. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Or the Episcopal Church. Y'all got that? So now, Henry VIII divorces Catherine and marries Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn finds young thing. He figured, look, I can get a son from Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn has a daughter, Elizabeth, right? Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, who started the slave trade for England, who commissioned John Hawkins. Y'all with me? So now, tell the history teacher so you know I can give a little more insight into certain things. So bear with me. Um, so now, Henry does not get a son from Cat from um, Anne Boleyn. She has a son, but the son is still born, right? So then now he wants to divorce Anne Boleyn. Divorces Anne Boleyn, has her head chopped off, right? Gets him another wife. Can't remember her name right now. But she has a son, Edward I, right? Okay. And um, Edward does actually become king, but he's real sick, he's real weak, so he dies. And then, now keep in mind, Henry was a Protestant. When he became a Protestant and started the Church of England, everybody in England became Protestants or part of the Church of England. Right. Mary is the daughter of, of, Catherine. of Catherine, right? right? And she is a Catholic because Catherine is related to the Pope, right? right. And at that time, there was only one church, the Catholic Church. Right. So Henry starts his own church. Everybody in England becomes Protestants. So Henry's a Protestant. Elizabeth is a Protestant. Catherine and Mary are both Catholics, right? right? Edward is a Protestant, but Edward dies. The next in line is Mary to become queen, right? So Mary becomes queen, and she tries to force everyone back into the Catholic Church. So now, how does she force everyone back into the Catholic Church? But if you did not, if you do not believe in the Pope, then you get killed. We burn you at the stake. We chop your head off, stick it on a pole. So she killed so, or had so many people killed, that the English gave her the nickname of what? Bloody, Bloody Mary. Man. It doesn't mean that if you go in the bathroom and you say it three times, somebody's going to come get you. It's just another white person doing what they do. Killing people. Go ahead. That's all it is. I don't want y'all to think I'm just so hard on white people. No, okay. There's a couple of good white people. Just don't waste time looking for them. I'm going to tell you what Malcolm X said. Now, I'm quoting Malcolm X. 
He said if you find a good white man, kill him before he turns back. <laughs> Now, brothers and sisters, we're almost done. Now, why are all these holidays celebrated in America? See, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, right? And the day after Thanksgiving is a new holiday. It's called Black Friday. This is a new holiday. Because the day after Thanksgiving is the official beginning of the Christmas shopping season. You understand what I'm saying? See, the reason that the enemy has all of these holidays is so they can deceive us and trick us, right? Um, into spending our money so that they can stay rich. And we can say, well, every year, every new year, right. they come on television. Well, you know, the economic figures just came out, and we've learned that the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. Like, no. They said every year. You heard that, right? But they never tell you why do the rich get richer and the poor get poor. It's because the rich have deceived the poor into giving them every dollar that they make. And see, we, because we own no businesses in our community, we are the most deceived That's right. of the poor. That's are y'all right. understanding what I'm saying? Right. When it comes to the poor, we are at the bottom of the barrel. Now, there was an article recently in the Chicago Sun-Times, and it talked about how white income is two-thirds higher than blacks. And it broke down every race according to their income. And everybody, including the Hispanics, I think you thought you was better than them. <laughs> But our, our income was at 30000 a year, average. The, the Hispanics was at 36000 So we're at the bottom, bottom line, right? right? So now, the reason that all of these holidays are celebrated is to get our money. Right. So you came down Stony tonight, right? You saw already that they got the Christmas trees on the corner of 95th in Stony Island, right? And then they're gonna set up shop over on, that's about 87 in Stony. And then when you go, like now it's a full lot of trees, right? And it will be a full lot all the way to December 24th. And on December 24th, you're gonna ride by on Stony, right? And all you're gonna see is pine needles. And you be like, man, what happened to all those trees? I didn't think they was gonna sell them all this year. But every year, guess what? They sell out. So now you gotta ask the question. See, we always talk about, um, see, see, I can't get down with the Muslims to see, you know, y'all be taking people money. That's all the Muslims, you know what I'm saying? I saw a brother at the mosque and he said, Who got the first hundred dollars? And I was in Home Depot and you can't even get a tree for a hundred dollars. I'm talking about a tree that you're gonna put in your house and throw away. But now you talk about we robbing people because we get money from the poor and use it to lift the poor. Right. But when have the Christmas tree farmers, the turkey farmers, the pumpkin farmers done anything? Where's the scholarship at from the Christmas tree farmers? Where's the the food, the food for the inner cities from the turkey farmers? I didn't give us anything. But you will complain about a man that's worked 50 years to help black people because he may ask you for some money because it takes money to help black people. I'm sorry. It just does, right? But you won't condemn Kenwood liquor, Rothschild's liquor, right? You won't condemn. Um, the people who sell you this bogus candy on Halloween, right? right you won't right. condemn American greetings for the Valentine's Day cards, right? right? You won't condemn stove top stuffing. Right. You won't condemn them. Go ahead, go ahead. You won't condemn the pig farmers who ain't doing nothing to help black people. But you can fix your big juicy black lips to condemn a righteous. That girl would have big juicy black lips to condemn a man. That's happening, our people. That's right. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so now the whole, the only reason that they have these holidays is so they can rob us of all the money that we've saved throughout the year. That's right. So they can live well and we can stay poor. But see, and I'm wrapping up with this. See, Almighty God, Allah, has raised up a man. See, in the Bible, he's called the Comforter. Y'all right? oh, heard of the Comforter, right? And that's what he's called in the Bible. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says that the Comforter will come and that this man, and it can't be him, because he says that I'm going to send him to you and that he will bear witness of me. You understand what I'm saying? So he's not sending himself to you and then bear witness to himself, right? But he's sending a man from himself that's like himself that's going to bear witness to who he is. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And he says that this man is going to lead you into all truth. See, Jesus couldn't bring us into all truth because he came 2,000 years ahead of his time. Right. So Paul describes him as a man that was born out of due season. Right? So if you get a bill, right? And the bill says, um, your phone bill is it's November 22nd, right? And it's due December 27th. Right. Well, it's not the due season you're going to have to pay, right? Because it's not time to pay. But now this January 27th, it's past due. Right? You pick up the telephone like, click, 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 no doubt. So now, this man wasn't born, according to Paul, at the time to give the message that he was given, which was the kingdom of God. Right? So Jesus realized this, and he prophesied that a man would come from himself, right? That would testify of him, and that this man would be filled with the spirit of truth, and he would guide the people into all truth. And I'm going to say this, and then we can go home, and we're closing right on time. I'm going to say that the man that Jesus was talking about is present right now. That's right, I'm going to say that this man lives right there in Hyde Park, go in ahead. Chicago. There's only one man that can go into a Christian church and preach Jesus better than those who came from the cemetery. I mean cemetery, right? There's only one man that can unite the hearts of Christians and Muslims throughout the earth. Is that right? There's only one man that, is, I mean, when you watch the television, he's so filled with the Holy Ghost, you flip it through the channels. And you stop and you see him. And it's something in you that won't even allow you to change the channel. And you just was flipping through the channels. And you saw this man. But his spirit, he was so filled with the spirit. That you couldn't even change the channel. And you had to wait till it went off. He's like, man, what a man, right? There's only one man present in the world. That is leading us into all truth. It's not the Archbishop of Canterbury, right? It's not the Pope, right? It's not the Dalai Lama. Because the Dalai Lama could not come in the hood and convert black people. Then they would run the Dalai Lama about the hood, pull his dress over his head, and beat him up in the projects. You know I'm telling the truth. They would slap the Pope's thing off his head, clap. And he'd get stumped out in the projects, right? <laughs> the only man that is bringing us into all truth is the Honorable Minister Louis Farmer. He is the topic that we've been looking for. So brothers and sisters, I don't want to belabor the point. What we need to do is stand behind the man that's been standing for us for the last 50 years. Right. See, when you tell the truth, because you tell the truth, you become unpopular. To the people who've been lying, right? The liar never wants to be exposed. That's right. But see, somebody has to be brave enough, courageous enough, strong enough to stand up 
and tell the truth, even though the truth will make them unpopular. Because it makes you popular with God, right? And unpopular with Satan. So, brothers and sisters, I hope and pray that you learned something from tonight's message. I pray you did. And I know that you probably saying, well, brother, I was really waiting for you to get to Christmas and the fat white man and the 12 reindeer and Santa Claus. But see, that's a whole subject in the you know? That's another night. But we'll deal with that. All right? So, brothers and sisters, um, I would like to leave you as I came before you with the reading words. Peace for taking the Arabic language. Awesome. I'm like, well,